If you'd like to turn to the second, second book of Samuel. And chapter 15, it's page 526. Second Samuel. And chapter 15. I'm pondering a couple of things this week and um, wasn't sure which of the two and I, I, I hope that they fit together but you can tell me when I finish whether they do or not <laughs> but 2nd Samuel chapter 15 and I, I'll read the whole chapter it says now it came about after this that Absalom provided for himself a chariot and horses 50 men as runners before him Absalom used to rise early, stand beside the way to the gate. It happened that when any man had a suit to come to the king for judgment, Absalom would call to him and say, From what city are you? And he would say, Your servant is from one of the, of the tribes of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, See, your claims are good and right, but no one listens to you on the part of the king. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that one would appoint me judge in the land. Then every man who has any suit or cause could come to me, and I would give him justice. And it happened that when a man came near to prostrate himself before him, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. And in this manner, Absalom dealt with all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole away the hearts of the men of Israel. Now it came about at the end of 40 years that Absalom said to the king, Please let me go and pay my vow, which I vowed to the Lord in Hebron. For your servant vowed a vow while I was living at Geshur in Aram, saying, If the Lord shall indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom is king in Hebron. Then two hundred men went with Absalom from Jerusalem, who were invited and went innocently. They did not know anything. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, David's counsellor, from his city Gilo, while he was offering the sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. Then a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, let us flee. For otherwise none of us shall escape from Absalom. Go in haste, lest he overtake us quickly and bring down calamity on us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. Then the king's servants said to the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatever my lord the king chooses. So the king went out and all his household with him. But the king left ten concubines to keep the house. The king went out and all the people with him and they stopped at the last house. Now all his servants passed on beside him, all the Kerethites, all the Pelethites, all the Gittites. Six hundred men who had come with him from Gath passed on before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why will you also go with us? Return and remain with the king for you are a foreigner and also an exile. Return to your own place. You came only yesterday. Shall I today make you wander with us while I go where I will? Return. Take back your brother's mercy and truth be with you. But Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives and as my lord the king lives, surely wherever my lord the king 
will be, whether for death or for life, there also will your servant be. And David said to Ittai, Go, pass over. So Ittai the Gittite passed over with all his men and all the little ones who were with him. While all the country was weeping with a loud voice, all the people passed over. The king also passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. It's quite an episode in the life of David, God's anointed king, that one of his sons, Absalom, initiates this great rebellion, a usurper, to take the throne. We've looked at it uh, previously. He is a type of Antichrist, one who wants to sit on the throne that the anointed king alone should sit on. David, this type of our blessed saviour and Absalom, a type of Antichrist. And I want us to think just briefly about that this morning and this man called Ittai. It's quite a story. First, shall we turn to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 24. Jesus speaking about <clears throat> the last days. Matthew 24. Jesus has given this catalogue of birth pangs. And verse 8, he says all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to tribulation, will kill you. You'll be hated by all nations on account of my name. And at that time, many will fall away, will deliver up one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will go cold but the one who endures to the end he shall be saved in Luke chapter 21 we get a little bit more detail on this reading from verse 10 Luke chapter 21 Jesus continued saying to them nation will rise against nation ethnic conflicts kingdom against kingdom There'll be great earthquakes, various plagues and famines. There'll be terrors and signs from heaven. But before all these things, they'll lay their hands on you and will persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors for my name's sake. It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. So make up your mind not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. For I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. But you'll be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. They'll put some of you to death and you'll be hated by all on account of my name. Yet not a hair of your head will perish, but your endurance will gain your lives. We're told before the return of Jesus, before these final events, that two of the things that will characterize what we will go through is number one, persecution, a hatred by all nations for those that belong to Jesus Christ. We're beginning to see that more and more throughout the earth. But it will be widespread. And the second thing will be a betrayal. A betrayal by loved ones, by those dear to us. And that's what David went through. Absalom, 
his own son, betrayed him. And there'll be something of that for us to face in these coming days. And many will fall away. Because lawlessness increases, many will fall away and will go cold. Most people's love will go cold. I want us to think about this man Absalom. See something of the characteristics. Because I believe we see the spirit of Antichrist in this man and it's good to recognize what are the characteristics there is one who is preparing a bride for the Lord Jesus who's that the Holy Spirit the one who is the same in character and nature as Jesus Jesus said I'll send the helper another one the same when he comes he will lead you into all truth he will glorify me. We have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, who points us to Jesus, who convicts us to clear up our lives and clean up our lives and to be fully committed to our blessed Saviour, the Lord Jesus. He's always pointing us to Jesus. And he's preparing a bride ready for his coming that's what he's about but there's an antichrist coming we were looking at this in our Bible study we've been going through Revelation and he is part of this satanic trinity remember the devil wants to be like God he always wanted to be like the Most High his heart was lifted up sin was born in the heart of Lucifer. His heart was lifted up and he was cast out of Satan, but his desire was to be like the Most High and to be worshipped. Whatever God does, the devil wants. Understand that. Whatever God can do, the devil will try to <coughs> counterfeit in all his guises. And just as God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we see a satanic trinity. When the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily in who? In Jesus, in the Son, in the, the Christ, the one who came to save us from our sins. And the third person of the Godhead was doing what? Working in people's lives to point them to Jesus. The helper when he came was going to do what? Convict of sin and righteousness and judgment. If the Holy Spirit is working in your heart, if you're saved today, it's because the Holy Spirit showed you that you're a miserable rotten sinner. Showed you your nature as a rebel. Convicted you of your filthiness. And revealed to you that you needed to be made righteous. Or you would face the wrath of God. In some way, that was the working of the Spirit of God. And then opened your eyes to see a Savior who died for you paid the price, bore your sins in his own body and faced the wrath of God in your place. But there'll be a satanic trinity. Judas, the son of perdition, is an example. When he went out from the disciples, it says Satan entered into him. Who entered into him? Satan entered into him. There's a man in the world. I don't know who he is yet. But I don't doubt that he's somewhere around. Because we're getting so close to the return of Jesus. And soon, Satan is going to enter into him. And then he's going to have a helper who's going to point people to worship 
the Antichrist. Do you understand? And Absalom is a type in the Bible of the Antichrist. There are two spirits at work in the world today. There are two saviors. And it's going to become very, very simple in the coming days. You make your choice. Who are you going to worship? The Holy Spirit is doing a work in people's hearts to bring them to worship Jesus and to worship Christ alone. But the spirit of Antichrist is at work to draw people in a different direction and prepare them to worship Antichrist. And in the story of Absalom, we get to see how he works in the church. And I want us to think briefly about that. Four things. <clears throat> Four things about this man, Absalom, who's a type of Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist working among God's people. Do you understand? Have I confused you and lost you? Oh, good. Four things then. Number one, his name. <clears throat> He's got a wonderful name. My father is peace. Well, was that true? Did he have peace with his father? No. He had no peace at all with his father. His name and his nature, the whole of his life, were a lie, dear friends. And the spirit of Antichrist is working in the church today. There are people who are professing to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and the whole of their life is a lie in some respect. What they're professing is not what they're living. Absalom's whole life was a lie. It was a sham. There are preachers. There are big names right across the church today. And it is being revealed. The shame of their nakedness is being revealed. They won't repent. They won't humble themselves. And the most awful catalogue of filthiness and corruption is being shown before the world. Isn't it? Why? Their lives are a lie. They're false. And Jesus said many false teachers... Many false anointed ones, false Christ, will fill the church in the last days. False prophets, false teachers, false anointed ones. Their lives do not match up. They're a lie. Absalom's life, his whole life, was a lie. And why was that? Number two. His heart was filled with bitterness. I don't know what the exact figure is. I'm guessing 90 something percent. 90 something percent of spiritual problems among God's people are down to unforgiveness. In some form or respect. People who simply will not forgive. They'll not let go of bitterness. They'll not look to God to cleanse their heart and to give them the capacity and the grace to pray for those who've wronged them. And there's some bitterness. And often it's for someone within their family. A parent or somebody who's wronged them. And they can't let go of it. And Absalom had that in his family, didn't he? We know the story of Absalom. There was a bitterness in his heart 
And he couldn't let go of it. And it destroyed his life. It destroyed his relationship within his family. Destroyed his relationship with his father. It destroyed his whole life. And he wouldn't let go of it. He wouldn't deal with the bitterness and the unforgiveness in his heart, dear friends. And it opened the door. It always does. And what does he open the door for? Every unclean spirit, dear friends. Every foul spirit from the pit of hell. You say, is that right? Yeah. Surely that's heresy. No. Turn to Matthew chapter 18. Jesus tells a parable. <clears throat> As a warning to us. And it's a very simple warning. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 18, I'll read from verse 21. Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Do I have to go that far? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but up to 70 times seven. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a certain king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he'd begun to settle them, there was brought to him one who owed him 10,000 talents. Since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, along with his wife and children and all that he had, and repayment to be made. And the slave Therefore, falling down, prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me. I'll repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him, forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell down and began to entreat him, saying, Have patience with me and I'll repay you. But he was unwilling, however, but went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. Now when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave. What is unforgiveness, dear friends? How does God see it? It's wickedness. It's evil. Our God is a forgiving God. The Spirit of God is a forgiving Spirit. Amen? Amen. If you have the Holy Spirit within you, God can help you to forgive anything or anybody. And we're without excuse. You wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you entreated me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave? Even as I had mercy on you and his Lord moved with anger, did what? Handed him over. To what? Tormentors. What happened in the life of Saul? He was gripped by an envy and a bitterness for a man who'd done nothing but come and seek to bless him, David. And what door did that open? A door to wicked spirits. They came and tormented him day and night. And the only relief he could get was when David played and worshipped by the Spirit of God. You might get a little bit of relief here and there, but dear friends, if God hands you over to tormentors, you'll never get right till you repent. And this man would not forgive. There was murder in his heart, he'd murdered his brother, and he was bitter towards his father. And the door was wide open in his heart for every unclean spirit to come and take residence. 
and I have no doubt that the Antichrist will be a man full of bitterness with his door wide open for Satan to enter into him. What else do we see in Absalom? He was boasting that he'd made vows to God. He was boasting about this wonderful relationship with God and all that he was going to do for God. What a liar! But the father of lies has taken residence in his heart. Turn to Luke chapter 18. Read from verse 9. Jesus told a parable to certain ones who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax gatherer. The Pharisee stood and was praying thus to himself. God, I thank thee I'm not like other people. Swindlers, unjust, adulterers, even like this tax gatherer. God's anointed me with a power. I've got a ministry, a gift for the body of Christ. That's me. I fast twice a week and pay tithes. Just come and touch me, you'll get the blessing. But the tax gatherer standing some distance away, even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven, was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. The sinner? Yeah. The sinner for whom Christ died. Watch out for people who are exalting themselves, dear friends, and bragging about their spiritual state and what they've done. And how God's always talking to them. Have you met people like that? God never stops talking to them. What is that, dear friends? It's spiritual pride. And God's not talking to them. If he ever was, he stopped a long time ago. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And Absalom was boasting about this wonderful vow and his wonderful relationship with God. And he made this vow to God where? At a place called Geshur. There's a lot of meaning in names in, in the passage of the Old Testament. You'll see this in certain stories. Geshur means proud beholder. Wherever you see pride, dear friends, be sure you're not seeing the Spirit of God. Wherever you see covetousness towards money, be sure you're not seeing the Spirit of God. Two dead giveaways. What's the only Spirit that's going to be working in a person like that? The Spirit of Antichrist. He had an accomplice. Absalom, you know who he was? A man called Ahitophel. Very shrewd, clever man. What do we know about Ahitophel? Whose grandfather was he? He was Bathsheba's grandfather. Ahitophel. Raised that little girl, sat her on his knee. Told her stories about God all, all her life growing up. Grew up into a fine woman. And she met a man. What a righteous man he was. Upright in all his ways. And what a day it was. 
when he had the joy of seeing his granddaughter brought and joined together with this fine young man of God. And someone came and destroyed it all, destroyed her, destroyed him. And something was born in Ahitophel's heart that day. Bitterness. And the door was opened, dear friends, for every foul spirit to take residence in that man. A man who'd shared sweet fellowship, David says in Psalm 3. He shared sweet fellowship with him. And now he was plotting against him. They went out from us, for they were not really of us. Second John. Judas went out from the disciples because there was something going on in that man's heart. A pride, a covetousness, something of bitterness. He wasn't one of the chosen ones upon the mountain of transfiguration. But there was something going on in that man, a selfish ambition, and every evil thing inhabited him. What a tragedy, dear friends. And how does it manifest itself? Well, we're told what Absalom did. He went out on the way to the gate. People coming to worship God, coming up to Jerusalem for the counsel of the king. And he intercepted them. They were on the right path. They wanted to be right with God. They wanted to worship right. They were going for the gate. And Absalom intercepted them. And what was his counsel? Everything's good. You're good. God's good. The world's good. Everything's good. You don't need to go in. You don't need to go through the narrow gate. You don't need to repent. God loves you. Everything's good. You're good. And he stole the hearts of God's people away. Stole them, dear friends. The Bible warns about people like that. And I'd like to suggest to you that the church is full of them today. They're not preaching repentance. People who want to get right and God's working in them. Maybe the Holy Spirit's stirring them. And they're heading for the gate and they get intercepted. Oh no, God's not like that. He's, he's, he's not wrathful against homosexuality. He's not wrathful against every impurity. He's not like that. God's good. You just need to learn to love yourself. And everything's good. And he stole the hearts of the people. Dear friends, the spirit of Antichrist is at work in the church today. And it's intercepting people and telling them they don't need to repent. They're not enemies of God. They don't have wicked natures. They can just come and receive. Because God's good and he loves them and everything. And thus Absalom stole the hearts of the people. The Holy Spirit is preparing a people, a bride for the, the bridegroom who's coming. And dear friends, the spirit of Antichrist is preparing a harlot church that in the coming days will receive the Antichrist because it's another spirit and another saviour and another gospel. And Absalom, Absalom is our illustration of it. But I don't want to end on a sorry note. 
I want to end on a joyous one. Because there's a man called Ittai. And who's he? Where's he from? He's a Gittite. So what? Well, that, what does that mean? It means he came from Gath. That's what they called them, Gittites, from Gath. Well, who else came from Gath? He was a Philistine. He was from Goliath's hometown. And he'd heard about a man called David. A ruddy little youth. And what had he done? He'd come out in the name of the Lord. And he defeated the giant. Destroyed him. And Ittai, something stirred in his heart. I want to be like that man. I believe we should all carry gospels on us. And as soon as we find an open heart, we should say, we've got some, the four gospels, just give them out. I challenge you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and tell me you don't like Jesus. Because Ittai had heard about David and he wanted to follow him. And somehow he hadn't encountered Absalom. He'd found David himself. Dear friends, we can get in the way of people seeking God. But Ittai knew that he was an enemy. He was on the wrong side. We're enemies of God, dear friends, by our nature, aren't we? We're children of wrath. And Ittai knew he's on the wrong side. He's an enemy of God. But there's one, the perfect one to follow. <coughs> And he came over to David. And David says, you've only been with me a day. Go your way. You, you don't realize what's happening in these days. Because there's a coup. Absalom's come. And he's trying to take over. And following me can mean anything now. Dear friends, that's our message. The good news is there's still some Ittiites out there. There's still people who want to get right with God. They know that they're enemies by nature. But there's one, his name is Jesus. And they want to follow him. But watch out because there's an Absalom out there. There's a howl at church which is trying to intercept them. And say, no, 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 everything's good. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. And we need to seek them out, dear friends. And tell them, you need to repent. You need to turn. You need to humble yourself. And you need to call upon Jesus Christ to be saved. The good news of the gospel is that he's a wonderful saviour. He died on that cross paid the penalty for your sin and if you will humbly come and call upon his wonderful name he'll meet with you and he'll change your heart but it might cost you everything in these days because Absalom's around and we could end up anywhere in the coming days dear friends Stop all this nonsense of promising people peace and prosperity and, and a good time. Where in days when to follow Christ will mean persecution and hatred and betrayal and every foul thing in the coming days. But when we follow Jesus, we're on the victory side. Iti knew. 
ETI knew who he wanted to follow. He knew he wanted to follow the one who destroyed the enemies of God. And dear friends, we have one who triumphed on the cross, who defeated death, who rose from the grave, who lives forevermore. His name is Jesus. We point people to him. But we don't compromise on repentance from dead works. Amen. 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 We were looking at Revelation chapter 12 and we saw this wonderful group of brothers and sisters who they overcame and they overcame because of the blood of the Lamb. The word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto death. Iti, are you going to be an overcomer? I'm coming with you, David. I'm coming with you. And you know what his name means? with me. Isn't that beautiful? I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I'm with him. Whatever it costs me, I'm with him. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. The none go with me. I still will follow. I'm with him. Are you with Jesus? Are you fully committed? No turning back. Because he's the victor. Are you on the winning side? Get out of the devil's camp. And turn to the saviour. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful that we can indeed serve the one whom God has made Lord and Christ, this Jesus that was crucified. Lord, we thank you for this illustration there in the Old Testament. Something of the days in which we live, Lord, we see some of these things, Lord, I, I, I do anyway. I believe you stirred that in my heart this week. And so, Father, we just commit what we've looked at today and ask, Lord, that you'll help us to apply these things into our lives. And, Lord, we're thankful that there's still, a, there's still itty eyes out there. And no matter what it costs, <coughs> want to be on the victory side, want to serve the Master. God's anointed. Lord, lead us. To them we pray in these days. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.